noble bit hope everyone is well and i hope everyone's having a great week all right then so in response to uh, uh, uh lee anderson he got sacked and he, lo he, he lost the whip so then politicians are pulled up they got asked straight up from all the politicians throughout the party all the way up to the the prime minister rishi sunak what happened? Why did Lee Anderson get sacked? No one can give a clear answer. We know why Jeremy Corbyn got sacked, don't we? When he took over Labour and Jeremy Corbyn got fired and every politician in their dog was very quick to come out and, uh, uh, and denounce him for his anti-Semitism, even up to his, uh, uh, the, the, uh, his former colleague and now current Labour leader, Keir Starmer, also came out and said, that yeah, he's, he's anti-Semitic and he has to be removed from power immediately, within days. But when, when they get pulled up and questioned about Lee Anderson and his uh, uh, Islamophobic statements, his racist statements, Khan and his mates, who are Khan's mates? What, because uh, uh, Sadiq Khan is a Muslim and is Pakistani, his mates are now Islamists. Right, that makes sense, that makes sense. Let's, let's check out the hypocrisy. Were they Islamophobic, those comments? Well, as I said, they were wrong, they were ill-judged, they were unacceptable, and that's why the whip was removed. Were they Islamophobic, those comments? Well, as I said, they were wrong, they were ill-judged, they were unacceptable, and that's why the whip was removed. Yeah, does the Conservative Party's suspension of Mr Anderson mean that at least he is suspected of being a racist? Well, what the words that he chose to use were, were not the right words to use, they were the, the wrong words, and words do matter. Annalise yeah. Dodds, the Labour chair, says Lee Anderson's comments are unambiguously racist and Islamophobic. Would you use, use those words to describe his comments? Well, I already said I wouldn't use his words, but nor am I going to jump and use uh, a, an opposition uh, MP's words about Lee Anderson without seeing well, why it not, if they're deep. factually correct? Sadiq Khan's got a terrible record on his uh, track record as mayor of London. That's not my Lots question, Mr. Harper. You've already before. dealt with that matter. My question is, was it racist what he said? Well, look, I'm not going to get into a, a detailed analysis of what he said. What he said was wrong and it wasn't true. Uh, I don't believe that Lee is in any way racist. However, I think he is very worried about a lot of the activity that's underway right now. I understand that, Minister, but was he racist? Um, I don't think personally that Lee is racist. To Muslim I, I mean, extremists. I, I know Lee, Rachel, and he is not Islamophobic, um, is not racist in my opinion, and um, he's just a guy who says it as it is. Do I think that Lee Anderson is a racist? The answer to that question is no. Do I think that sometimes he can put his foot in it? Yes. Our concerns about Islamic extremism uh, and we should be able to talk about those without being called racist. So I think what Lee Anderson did was obviously he did that in a very unacceptable and wrong way. In a racist but way. But we, what we have seen, regardless of that, last week we saw protests outside our own House of Commons. Were they Islamophobic? Well, I think the, the most important thing is that the words were wrong. They were ill-judged, they were unacceptable. Why was it necessary for Lee Anderson to have the whip suspended? Where was the tolerance well, there? Well, I, I, Nick, res respectfully, I, th I think what Lee said was wrong, yes. and as a result, of, well, as a result of what he said, he had the the whip removed from him. That's that's so what was it action. specifically that meant the whip had to go? We agree it was wrong, but why was it wrong? Nick, it, it was wrong. What no, no, Lee but why said. Was it wrong? What he said was wrong. As a result of what he said, the whip was removed from him. That was robust action. No, that was why robust was it action wrong? that was That's taken. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, it was wrong, Nick, because of what he said, and robust no, action was taken so as a result. Well it was it was Let's try this a different way. Was it Islamophobic? What he said was wrong, and robust what? action was taken, no. and the whip was removed within 24 but, hours. Minister, was it Islamophobic? And uh, Nick, it was wrong. Minister, I'm going to, and I, I'm never, I'm normally a very polite man, I'm actually going to effectively put the fact, I'll ask you now, for the third time, I've asked you six times why it was necessary, for the third time, was it Islamophobic? Uh, Nick, it was wrong. I'll have to curtail the interview there, I'm grateful for your time, but enough already. Michael Tomlinson is the Minister of State for Illegal Migration, unable to answer a question. So yeah, as you can see, it's an absolute joke. 
What kind of games are you playing here? Who do you take us for? You got the likes of Talk TV and GB News, just you know, getting livid and red in the face, trying when they try to champion uh, the likes of Lee Anderson and Bravham and to make it seem like you see they're 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 the ones that are brave and bringing it to the, the bringing it to the truth. The same as that 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 Joker Paul Thorpe. I re reacted to one of his videos a little while ago where he was he was talking about how. Um, a young lad was the victim of a stabbing, and uh, the 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 the, um, the criminal was basically let off the hook with a fifty pound fine and a letter of apology. You know, I, I, I respected his response. You know, but people pointed out as well that it, this this guy's a Brexiteer who uh, now lives in Spain, and um, and his channel's the same, full of all of this 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 basic basically racist crap. You know, there's no go zones where Muslims are only allowed there. Oh, shut up, man. <laughs> Absolute waffle. So then, shortly after all of this, the Anderson loses his whip. Politicians refuse to re refer to his statements as racist and Islamophobic. Then uh, Rishi Sunak, without anyone asking him to, decides to uh, hold a press conference outside 10 Downing Street the other evening. You know, like it's a state of emergency or something, where he uh, he goes on to explain that extremists are trying to tear us apart. And you're thinking, where is all this coming from? And then he lets slip in his talk about uh, the Rochdale by-election, where the by-election was necessary because they fired Azhar Ali for anti-Semitic statements when his statements, conspiracy theory, are not were directed towards Israel. Not not any kind of Jewish person whatsoever to Israel but apparently now speaking out against Israel especially in this current climate while they're out there committing genocide is considered anti-semitic I'll be surprised if my, this video here doesn't get taken down at some point good thing I'm not monetized yet because I'm sure this would get demonetized rapidly so as a result of Azhar Ali the MP losing his job they hold another election they had to have a by-election in Rochdale and guess who won? The infamous George Galloway. Rishi Sunak was not impressed. Keir Starmer, this is for Gaza. You have paid and you will pay a high price for the role that you have played in enabling, encouraging and covering for the catastrophe presently going on in occupied Palestine in the Gaza Strip. Here in the Northwest, in the West Midlands, in London, from Elford to Bethnal Green and Bow, Labour is on notice that they have lost the confidence of millions of their voters who loyally and traditionally voted for them generation after generation. Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak are two cheeks of the same backside and they both got well and truly spanked tonight here in Rochdale. In recent weeks and months we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. And it is beyond alarming that last night the Rochdale by-election returned a candidate who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th, who glorifies Hezbollah and is endorsed by Nick Griffin, the racist former leader of the BNP. There are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. Since October the 7th, there have been those trying to take advantage of the very human angst that we all feel 
about the terrible suffering that war brings to the innocent, to women and children, to advance a divisive, hateful ideological agenda. Yes, you can march and protest with passion. You can demand the protection of civilian life. But no, you cannot call for violent jihad. And I want to speak directly to those who choose to continue to protest. Don't let the extremists hijack your marches. You have a chance in the coming weeks to show that you can protest decently, peacefully, and with empathy for your fellow citizens. Let us prove these extremists wrong and show them that even when we disagree, we will never be disunited from our common values of decency and respect. This week, I've met with senior police officers and made clear it is the public's expectation that they will not merely manage these protests, but police them. And I say this to the police, we will back you when you take action. So as you can see, he wasn't impressed with that. And he's using this and the pro-Palestine marches uh, to uh, basically fuel the fire, to continue the message of Braverman and Anderson and Talk TV and GB News and every other flipping joker out there. It's a shame because you have that with 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 both with both uh, uh, with both parties are just putting their foot down and they're just refusing to budge in their support of Israel. They're refusing to call for a ceasefire. They're refusing to acknowledge what is happening out there as a genocide. They can moan and complain about Hamas as much as they want. In my view, they was a terrorist organisation. However, they were also democratically elected in what the, uh, uh, the, the democratic judges that was at the election in 2005, or was it 2006, where they said that this is one of the most uh, 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 honest and clear votes that had ever taken place. And what was the response of the world? The democratic world, after the, uh, the, 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 this organisation become democratically elected, was to refuse to acknowledge them. The first one being to refuse to acknowledge them, Netanyahu. Even though Netanyahu was the, ones, was the one who was funding Hamas.